Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration and today the message that I have for you is don't give your power away. Don't give your power away to a narcissist or anyone else in your life. You might not even be realizing that you're doing this. So I'm gonna talk about the key to not giving away your power. I'm gonna talk about what it looks like when you are giving away your power and I'm gonna give you some tips on how to not give away your power. I know I promised you a video on The Rock, on one of the important allies that you wanna enlist during your self-healing journey. I'm gonna to get to that soon. I was traveling during the last week, I was talking to a bunch of people. This was the topic that kept coming up over and over again. People didn't identify it as such, but the way they were expressing their struggles, I realized like this is something that's really moving through the collective consciousness right now, so I want to address it. Think about a recent time when someone said something or did something to you that was mean, unfair, cruel, or otherwise asshole -ish. okay? Think about this recent experience. How did you feel when they did that? And how did you react or respond to whatever they said or did? And then how did you feel after that? Like maybe not in the very moment, but maybe like an hour, a day later, how did you feel about how that all went down? So chances are, if you got provoked by somebody, they said or did something, you had some sort of emotional reaction, maybe it felt like momentarily good, but then later you really regretted it. That's typically the process about what happens. And why did you regret it later? because you gave them the emotional reaction. And in giving them the emotional reaction, you gave away your power. It's that simple. That's how we give our power away, is we allow another person to hijack our emotional state. So what are some signs that you've given away your power? The very first one is you're rehashing over and over again in your mind, the conversation, the interaction, what you said, what you did. Right? It's just like it's constantly in your mind. Like you can't even sleep sometimes because it's just in your mind. Like a lot of energy is going to that. When your thoughts and your emotions are focused on that, you are sending energy in that direction. In essence, you are giving away your power. Maybe what you notice is that you're fighting with them in your mind. Like you're driving to work or you're taking a shower and it's like in your mind, you're fighting with that person. Like you're arguing with them, you're fighting with them, you're justifying yourself very common way of giving away your power. All that energy is going to them. When your emotional state gets hijacked, maybe you felt great and that person comes along and they go, you know, with whatever nasty thing they did and then all of a sudden, you know, it knocked you off balance. Now you're just feeling icky. You're not feeling good. Like you can't get yourself back to that state. It takes like hours maybe to get yourself back to the emotional state you were in beforehand when you simply can't focus on anything else. It's like all you can think about is that person or that recent interaction or that one little phrase that they said which pissed you off. Maybe you notice like these gnawing, anxious feelings in your body. Maybe it's like you can't quite articulate it or identify it, but it's just this very uncomfortable, gnawing, anxious feeling. Again, that's a sign that you have given your power away. When you are fantasizing about revenge, Okay, revenge, maybe the idea feels good, maybe in the moment it feels good, but essentially when you take revenge on someone else, you are giving away your power. You're probably gonna regret it later because in some way you're gonna lose your dignity, you're gonna feel like you've stepped out of your own integrity because you wouldn't normally do that kind of thing, but you allowed those emotions to take you over, you did something that you regret. Revenge looks like strength, but it's actually weakness. When you react with negative narcissistic supply, okay? Narcissistic supply can be positive or negative. In the positive way, it's during that idealization when they're flattering you and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, you're so amazing. You're so wonderful. You're the best. You're just so interesting, right? And then the negative supply is during the devaluation when now they're putting you down, they're provoking you, they're trying to get a rise out of you, and then you react emotionally to that. And you might think, oh, okay, that looked like strength, you know, but in essence, what happened was you fed the beast, right? You fed the beast the negative narcissistic supply. You gave your power away, you made them stronger, and then you're gonna feel weaker after that. 
because you gave your power away through your emotional reaction. Another way that you can really give away your power is feeling like you need to keep defending yourself, okay? When someone says something and it's not right, it's not what you intended, it's not how you feel, it's not what you said, it's not right in some sort of way, and you say, no, that's not what I meant, or that's not you know, what I said, those weren't my words, you're interpreting that in a different way. You know, as soon as you start to like say that, you can say one thing to try to clarify the situation. Actually, what I intended to say was this or that. Or they ask you a question and you give them an answer and they start you know, honing in on you. If you get caught in that loop of self-defense, okay, if you defended it once and you tried to clarify it and they dismissed it again and continue to insist on their way, and you keep trying to defend yourself and they keep trying to tell you how you're wrong and you this and that and the other and you're defending and justifying how you feel, how you think, what you said, how you do, you're gonna lose a lot of energy in that. Okay, that's one of the biggest tricks that a manipulator will use is to put you on the self-defense. Like you approach them with an issue that you have with their behavior, they flip it around and they say, you're wearing too much makeup right now or that dress is too revealing or there's some sort of way to put you then on the defense. So they've completely flipped the thing around and now you get caught in self-defense, you totally forgot like what the issue even was. You're giving your power away. And the bottom line is you know you've given your power away when you feel like someone's victim, okay? You can even apply this politically. When you feel like the victim of a politician or a situation, you have given your power away. You're not strong that way, right? When you feel like you're the victim, there's no strength there. You've given the power away. So the key here to maintaining your power and to take your power back is self-control. Self-control is the key to taking back your power. What does that mean exactly? Self-control is ultimately about emotional neutrality. Remember that phrase, emotional neutrality. What does that mean? That means that you don't give them that emotional reaction. It means they try to provoke and get that rise out of you and you simply don't give it to them. You might have seen my video called five ways to disarm the narcissist, right? Maybe it's best that you're no contact with the narcissist in your life, but maybe you have to deal with one, like at work or at your building, or it's some family member that you can't get away from yet, or it's a co-parent, you know, you gotta co-parent your kids for the next how many every years, and so you have to deal with them in some sort of way. Those five ways of disarming them are essentially these tactics about emotional neutrality. It's about responding in ways that has zero emotion and it will piss them off. They'll be so upset. You can even read the comments on there and you can see who the manipulators are because they're really upset <laughs> about those phrases. They don't like them. They call them passive aggressive and they're not. They're simply emotional neutrality. And that's really the essence of the gray rock technique. I'm sure you've heard of that by now, the gray rock technique when you have to deal with some sort of manipulative person on an ongoing basis. It's about no emotion. It's about not giving them that rise. And you'll see eventually it works. Like first it pisses them off and then eventually they disengage because it's not fun for them. People will try to provoke you and to knock you off balance because maybe they feel insignificant or powerless in their own life. So they turn to you and they try to provoke you to get that rise out of you so that it gives them some sense of power. Like at some level they know that if they can knock you off balance, they own you. And they will not stop trying to keep doing that, trying to keep getting that emotional reaction from you, trying to get you to lose self control control so that they get your power. It doesn't work if you don't give them what they want. So stop, disengage, and approach with emotional neutrality if you have to be in contact with them. So how do you maintain self-control? How do you maintain that emotional neutrality when people are behaving like assholes? It's a hard thing to do. It's really hard. It's like you're just gonna wanna react to that emotionally. You gotta get that self-control and remind yourself that you don't wanna give away your power. Recognize that this is entirely your choice. Your response is your choice. Your response is your responsibility. If you haven't seen my video yet on reacting versus responding, it's on like the front page of my YouTube channel. 
check it out because it goes into depth on that. Another thing you can do is to walk away, opt out. You try to have a normal conversation with this person, they're refusing to listen to you, they're continually trying to provoke you, walk away, opt out, disengage. You don't have to deal with that. Give them nothing. Starve them of that negative emotional supply, that negative narcissistic supply. Validate your feelings, right? Because it's really easy to get really confused when someone else approaches you with this like overconfidence that they know that they're right, even though you know that they're wrong, but then you start to doubt yourself, validate your feelings. If you need a reality check, go talk to your best friend, go talk to that person that you always run things by each other when things are going on and get their validation, like get them to look at that and like, what do you think of that? And he, see what they say. And if they're like, no, you know, that, that person is totally off, then you're validating your own feelings about that experience. So, okay, you're off the hook. Now you don't need to go around and around trying to get that other person to validate your feelings. You know, don't look to them for that. Remind yourself that you don't want to play their game in order to maintain your dignity and integrity. If you stoop to their level and you respond with hurtful words or hurtful actions that are the exact same things they did to you, it doesn't make you more right. It just means both of you are wrong. It's that whole, who is it? George Bernard Shaw, I think, who wrote about the pigs, right? You know, don't wrestle with a pig because you're gonna get dirty and the pig's gonna enjoy it. That's exactly what happens in these situations. Remember, this is the only way to beat the narcissist, is to not let them make you give up your self-control. Don't let them do that. It's your choice. It's your control. It's the only thing you have control over in this situation. You can't make them stop saying and believing and doing what they do. You can only, only take responsibility for your response. So here's my challenge question to you. What is one situation in your life where you need to take greater self-control today in order to take your power back? What is that situation? How can you do that? How can you take your power back through new ways of using emotional neutrality and then do it? And ask yourself, how do you want to feel? You know, you're hanging out with somebody and you don't feel so good around them. Like that's not really their responsibility. It, they might be an asshole. I'm not saying they're not an asshole. But what I'm saying is it's your responsibility. If you don't like the way you feel, get away from that person. Stop hanging out with that person. You know, and if you have to deal with this person on an ongoing basis, co-parent, etc., you know, how can you help yourself? feel good and feel strong in that situation? How can you reach a new level of emotional neutrality towards that person that they don't knock you off balance like that? So that's the message I have for you today and I'm sending you a big hug.